Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the reasons why machine learning models do not perform as expected sometimes. Uh, there are many reasons. Uh, I'll discuss about the important ones. Um, okay, the first one is uh, poor outlier treatment. Outliers are very detrimental to model performance. Uh, they are extreme observations. Uh, they're not, uh, you know, they're not good observations for your model. You should not have them in your training data set. But oftentimes this is ignored. As a modeler, you sometimes ignore uh, these um, outliers. And what happens then is that uh, the model estimates are then somewhat biased. And then what happens later when you actually uh, implement your model, they do not perform well as expected. Uh, and also depends on the model, the machine learning algorithm that you are using for model building. Some ML models are less resilient to outliers, some are better resilient. So some models can handle outliers in a better way than the others. Okay, so if I say, for example, if we're building a linear regression model, um, machine uh, sorry, the outliers are very, very uh, influential there, as in your estimates could change a lot with the presence of outliers. And if you remove them, you will have totally different set of uh, estimates. Uh, it's very important, therefore, to handle the outliers properly. And then most importantly, uh, it's very important to uh, recognize the multivariate outliers because what happens is that people uh, do exploratory data analysis on each and every independent variable or any predictors. What they often forget to do is to do it uh, in a combined fashion. Um, so multivariate outliers are, you know, a typical example of uh, the outliers where we often uh, overlook them and they create issues in the model predictions. One example for is that, say in a demographic data, you have, um, you know, you have age, you have weight, okay, and uh, someone's weight is, uh, let's say, 80 kg, right? But 80 kg is not an outlier, right? There are people in the world um, having a weight of 80 kg and above, so that's not a surprise. It's not an outlier, so you will not treat it. But and there is another variable, which is age, okay? And someone age is, let's say, is just five year old. Well, there are people in the world with five years old, so it's not an outlier. But what happens if you have 80, eight, uh, someone with weight of 80 kg and um, age of five years, that's when you take uh, separately, they're not outliers. These observations are not outliers. But when you take combined, same person having age of five years and weight of 80 kg, that's... Uh, definitely an outlier because you you almost never have a person who is just five year old and weighing 80 kg that's never never the case uh, almost never the case so these are multivariate outliers and often people uh, forget about them to treat uh, while building models and then you have class imbalance this is a classic uh, problem in um, building machine learning models uh, especially in some uh, problems where there are two less events in your training data set. One such example is the fraud detection where uh, you have a lot of observations with non-fraud, but very less observations with fraud. And fraud here is the event. You want to predict event. So you want to take both fraud events and uh, non-fraud events. Fraud transaction, for example, in the credit card industry and non-fraud uh, transactions. And there's just too many non-frauds and less frauds. When you build a model, you could have very good uh, predictive power of the model giving let's say 98, 99% accuracy, but most of the accuracy is coming from non-fraud uh, uh, transactions, right? So the model is able to predict the non-fraud transactions or the non-events very well, but not the events very well, okay? But your intention is to build a model that can predict uh, frauds, right? The events, the event of interest, not the non-fraud, right? Um, hence, even though we have very good accuracy right there in your training data set, you know, test data set, it's still poor performance in the, um, in the production, actually. So there it uh, has a lot to do with uh, the way you have built the model, right? You should do a proper sampling, sometimes known as oversampling. You should weigh 
use different sampling rates, uh, right, in order to also have a, a proper balance between your events and non-events, right? There are a lot of other techniques also used in um, this low event uh, uh, modeling. Uh, fraud is one very you know good example. There are also such many examples such as anti, uh, anti money laundering, uh, tax evasion, uh, yeah, things like that, which are rare events. So it's a bit difficult to model such problems. And then uh, unrepresentative development sample. It's uh, again a classic uh, problem with uh, modeling, especially in uh, statistical modeling, less in machine learning modeling, because I think in some ways machine learning models actually are somewhat robust to, uh, you know, bias in the sample uh, and, and things like that. Whereas statistical modeling where, you know, you're not just interested in prediction, but you're also interested in uh, the inferential statistic, the relations between dependent and independent variable sampling plays a huge role there. Uh, so make sure that it's not unrepresentative sample. Um, it has to be representative. Uh, so your sampling should be correct. Otherwise, you know, the performance of the model will definitely be very, very poor. Um, it goes without saying for any kinds of modeling, uh, be it statistical or machine learning or deep learning, uh, having a good sample, a representative sample for the population is a must. So ensure that you have uh, a proper uh, sample that represent the population. The next one is wrong performance metrics used for evaluation. So when you're building a model, you must have used uh, different metrics to evaluate the performance of the model. Well, there is no one size fit all metrics. There are many met uh, metrics which, you know, actually work on certain problems, but do not work in many other problems. Okay. So ensure that uh, the metrics are in line with the, the, the revenue metrics or the return on investment metrics of the business side. Otherwise, what happens is that the model is good. It is wonderful. It is all the metrics uh, are, you know, whatever threshold we are set for ourselves. We have achieved that through, uh, through uh, modeling, but they do not meet the business criteria, hence not considered good models. So ensure that you uh, run it past through the uh, stakeholders so that they agree on the metrics that you use for performance evaluation. Otherwise, iterate, re-iterate before you get uh, the desired um, results on the agreed upon metrics. And then omitted variable bias. It's often not talked about in machine learning side, more in data science side, but it is a huge, uh, a huge thing in statistical or econometrics model building, where some important features may be missing from your model. And what happens uh, as a result is that you, you tend to have a misfit to the data set and your estimates could be biased. And it could you know, create not just you know, problems in predicting your, your target, but also give a false uh, overview of the relationship between independent variable and the dependent uh, variable, um, right? So, um, but it is indeed a huge problem. Ensure that uh, you have all the uh, required independent variables needed for the given problems. So uh, collect as many variables as possible for, for that problem and select the ones which are the best for the, for the problems or best for to predict uh, the uh, target variable, right? So uh, as the name suggests, important variables should not be omitted from the model. And then uh, lack of monitoring. Uh, again, a big problem in many industries, some industry do have good monitoring and backtesting, uh, you know, framework, backtesting uh, sort of uh, procedures and all. But in many um, industries, uh, monitoring is not given often not given enough importance. Model needs to be mo monitored. Uh, the performance of the models need to be monitored uh, on regular basis. Otherwise, uh, what would happen is that uh, the data might have changed, uh, model performance might have changed over time, and you wouldn't know uh, whether it has changed or not. And you know, it would reflect in your revenue and profit and so on. So it may not directly reflect in the model performance, but will have uh, an impact on the uh, overall performance of your business. So uh, in order to, to be able to, uh, you know, sort of track it over time, uh, it's important to have a, a proper model monitoring uh, on a regular basis. 
and then when you see some issues with the performance of the model model should be updated whether it is including you know uh, a missed uh, variable or it could be just reestimating your parameters or it could be you know some sort of uh, uh, minor development or it could be a complete new development of the model whatever be it depending on the you know the the, the you know the resource and time and the money availability yeah, the company will take a decision whether to redevelop my model completely or just to update few things but it's important to track the performance where it is not done in many companies some other common issues oversimplification what happens is that we tend to sometimes uh, you know romanticize simple models uh, what happens in that case is that uh, even though the performance uh, is known to be not that great for the simple models we tend to agree that okay you cannot achieve higher performance with um, simple models you have to complicate it and there are other problems with that for example uh, implementation issues in implementation but as a result you sacrifice performance and that reflects in the production also then overfitting a very common problem if you are uh, you have studied some sort of uh, machine learning statistical modeling or um, or artificial intelligence you would know that overfitting is a big issue so always ensure that the model is not overfitted uh, your performance in training data set and test data set in all kinds of uh, validation data sets should be consistent should be otherwise you know if you are just happy with your performance in a training data set that could uh, give you some uh, unexpected results in the production then implementation issues the of a lot of times especially uh, you know i think it's there in all all kinds of industries but definitely in industry where you don't have a validation team you don't have a team that reviews your models there are issues in implementation in issues in interpretation of the model results uh, exist and i've heard from many people uh, so sometimes it's good to have a validation team or a review team that actually does the review of the models right uh, to ensure that it is error free and then sometimes modelers uh, the data scientists lack uh, business knowledge so uh, and the business lack data science knowledge and they simply do not know how to communicate among themselves and as a result what happens is the model might be wonderful but it may not bring uh, the desired uh, outcome in terms of the revenue and profit may not you know maybe very good in terms of the uh, you know technical metrics but not in terms of the uh, metrics is uh, useful for uh, generating revenue and profit and that's also a big issue now um a general uh, suggestions for having a um a good model but also having a, a model that is useful to the business to the to the organization is that ensure that all the stakeholders also people the so called non technical people from business are also on board uh, when it comes to taking uh, decision or finalizing a model be it finalizing your uh, predictors finalizing your target variable the metrics that you use to you know assess performance the monitoring framework the review process in every single details ensure to involve the people from business it helps a lot some uh, many times